could make him fly also. What's up, everybody? Welcome once again, my friends, to the party time that never ends. Charlotte Soccer Show is back, and it's a special edition. When you see me sitting here all by myself, there's a very good chance that what we're about to do is decoding the presser. That's right. We had a huge press conference today from Dean Smith, and I am here to break it all down for you because that's what I love to do, and uh, some of you all there enjoy watching, so I hope that uh, more and more we'll get to... uh, Share the love and push back. If you ever think I'm wrong on anything, push back for sure. Uh, we are getting ready for a massive match. Uh, going to get our first road points of the year, we hope, in New England. Game on Apple's MLS season pass, as always, on uh, uh, 7.30 kickoff. But what the real deal is, is the Hop Fly Brewing Watch Party at 6 p.m. in the Brew House. We definitely want to see you all there. Uh, Hop Fly is working on turning itself into South End's home for Charlotte FC games and... Uh, we're happy to partner with them in that uh, we get really involved and uh, we even got a pretty sweet graphic here for you to look at. Uh, uh, check it out. Uh, it's going to be really fun. A lot's going on. Uh, we've had a great time there this year and uh, that will continue. So let's decode the presser. Let's bring Dino in. Let's uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, Mr. Dean Smith. And uh, I heard a little bit about what happened in this thing. Uh, obviously I, I, some usually come into these things mostly blind, but not totally blind. And that's the case again uh, tonight. So, uh, but speaking of vision terminology, let's do a Dino style. Let's put the sunglasses on because what I did hear about this press conference is that Dino busted a pretty epic uh, mic drop on your boy Caleb Porter, who was talking out of st- me, uh, was talking out of school earlier, uh, right before this. So, set up for a pretty cool moment that I have not actually seen how it all played out. I've just only read it. So, uh, here we go. Uh- um, from the weekend, are there any changes? It's Scotty, I guess. Scotty Arfield is back <laughs> in contention. All right, uh, that first uh, first note there is that Dean was not ready for this press conference to start. Clearly, uh, he was still opening his water as he went to answer the first question, and uh, he clearly missed what the question was all about. And we'll have to sort of uh, give him the, uh, the little prompt there to get it going. He's trained with us. <laughs> Um, so he's fine. Enzo Capetti obviously came back last week. He's fine. Um, so, as I've said to the medical departments at the moment, they've opened the door of the greenhouse or glasshouse as it is in in the US. Uh, so we've got a lot more people available now. I know Ben was doing a little bit. Love a great story. Dino uh, American term, British term uh, moment. Uh, we get a lot of them, and I never get tired of them. Please. Is he progressing well? He's progressing really well. Him and Brandon um, are coming along. He's talking about Bender here. Um, ben got to do some of the passing work today with with the squad, and uh, in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, we can integrate him into into some training. In terms of from last week, you had said that there was a lot of disappointment off of the the draw. How have kind of they attacked this week? Has there been almost kind of a residual like, hey, you know? We took these two games against the supporters winners and the MLS Cup winners and, and maybe having dealt a little bit more confidence. Yeah, I think first and foremost, they were disappointed as a group uh, because they felt they deserved the three points and probably didn't take enough chances to, to, get, to, to get the three points. Um, but, you know, I think they took the words that I said. Didn't take enough chances. They didn't take any chances, hardly. I mean, we got to, we only scored the penalty, but... Uh, uh, Yikes, we sure sent a lot of balls into Rosette, didn't we? Speaking of American British terms. Said to them after the game on board and came in on Monday refreshed um, and pleased with their performance. And, you know, that they can be because I thought we were excellent on Saturday. How much we do were. you think you'll be able to use Leo on Saturday? Um, probably too early for him to, to start, um, but he got a good 35 minutes Oof. under his belt. He also played on, we had a, a game on Monday. And he played 45 minutes in that, so he's getting he's getting back to full fitness, which is which is good news for us. All right, so I got to jump in here. I got to jump in because a first off, thanks Dino, you freaking screwed me. Uh, if you watched the preview episode that we taped and released earlier today, right here on this YouTube channel, presented by Hotfly, uh, you saw me give the lo- stone cold log guarantee that Leo would start, uh, and uh, as I did note at the time. My stone cold guarantees never work out. And somehow I really thought that one was going to. I'm so pissed that Dino came out and like undermined 
my guarantee uh, later in the afternoon. That totally sucks, but it is what it is, I guess. But but think about it this way: like he said, he he said he played thirty on Saturday. He played forty five on Monday. So he put 75 minutes. He can't go out and start a week later. I don't I don't really know about that. Like that this could be head games, like just trying to make it feel like he's not going to start to the to the opposing manager, maybe so they think there's a chance cuz he seemed pretty I mean, he went right it, it didn't look like head games. Like he definitely if he's acting, he pulled it off for sure. He's probably not. I'm not going I'm not saying that, but I'm just you know, I'm not trying to stir any pots here, uh you know, but uh um I don't know. I just feel like it's just it's a cross purposes to me to say he played 75 minutes, but he's still not ready to start. Like if I was going to say he's not full match fitness, wouldn't you want him for 60 from the start instead of coming in for 30 again? I don't know. I'm not Dino. Uh, I'll talk to Dino about this uh, some other time. Again, if you watch that preview episode, you heard my message, my two things that I asked Dino to do for us. So uh, we're all well aware of that. And from Enzo and Patrick, is that going to turn into almost a matchup dependent thing? Or do you feel like you want to see more of those two guys separate from each other? No, I want them both to be pushing each other. Um, I think they can both give a little bit different in in the ways they play. Um, You know, and I I want competition there. Uh, You know, sometimes I believe that we could probably play with with both of them. But, you know... uh, (laughs) At the moment, we've gone with one or the other, um, and you know, let's see, let's hope it's a, a blossoming battle between the two of them, and they start banging some goals in. Was it a friendly about Definitely it? glad for uh, Dino to ask that question. It looks like Carol might have a follow, or for or for uh, Willie P to ask that question. It looks like Carol might have a follow up here, and then I'll chime in. Yeah, we had a, we had a friendly. Um, we had a friendly game here, and we played. Uh... Oh, well, never mind. I thought she was going to ask, is it a friendly competition between those guys? I'll just chime in to say the idea of playing them both definitely appeals to me. I think Enzo would play a little wider and, and uh, you know, running behind and be a you know, faux wing, you know, I'm, but in that situation, maybe not. And Patrick would be more target man. But I don't know. We could do it. 4-4-2. We can always uh, bust out the old 4-4-2 if we need to. But I think that it's really cool to have a competition. There really never was a true competition on this level as, as far as Ajimong and Capetti, as far as either one, we're happy with either one to start and we're pissed that either one is on the bench, you know, so that's, that's good from the fan standpoint. And um, I think it's going to be Copetti in new England, but we'll see. Well, you know, we, we will see if Liel's not ready to start is Copetti ready to start. I don't know. Full, full 90 minutes. With, with other teammates or how would you? No, we, we invited a, a team in. Um, am I right to give the team? Yeah. Yeah, we, we invited uh, NCFC in um, and we had a game against them. I love to well, make sure that you can reveal the secrets. Kind of I've personally have done that as well then, myself. How do you think he's, he's done, you know, with getting used to the team, his introduction here? I think he's done well and I think because of, of the dressing room that we've got and the, the players that we've got, I think it's a lot easier to, to come in and mix straight away. Um, they're really good people, uh, the players that we've got here, and I think they they help the integration procedure really quickly. And uh, you know, he looks he looks like he's been here more than you know just a few days already. Um, and Ron, credit to the captain back, for that. Is there any scenario where you have him and two other eights in there, or I don't know, like he's is he making you think about things? Yeah, he certainly is, and that that's the beauty of it, and that's what I want. I want to be thinking Veronica, about things. Yeah. Um, you know, I I think. You know, for the first three, four games, the team picked itself, so to speak, and, you know, the bench picked itself. And now we can actually change things a little bit. And, you know, uh, I'll have to upset a few people, but that's the the beauty of my job. Oh, man. Man, that hurts, you know, because for me, like, uh, you know, I always talk about, you know, I'm a big fantasy player and I'd love to know if I could predict the lineup. I I have a big edge going into this game that I play, but... um, as a fan, as a Charlotte FC fan, take all fantasy implications out of it. I absolutely love the fact that we're just deep and that we can run out of crazy 11. I actually kind of like the idea of crazy 11s going out there and let's see what Dino can do and cook. I mean, consistency is key, but when you have a lot of quality, and I think we've had like the big theme for Charlotte FC this year is right, is that we were this good the whole time. We just had the wrong coaches, right? And so Dino's the one who can prove that and, ma- and make all correct stuff. They had a rough CONCACAF 
match this week. Uh, and to be honest, they Steve haven't been talking about know your enemy or like that at all yet. Are they? I mean, are they a team ripe for the picking, or are they a wounded animal that you have to be wary of? Um, I'm not sure which one, um, but we have to be wary uh, because I watched them in the build-up to our Toronto game. I think they played Toronto the second game and they were by far the better team on the day, uh, but lost 1-0 to um, Australia. I think it was something like 24 shots to four on the, I on the, that game. On the day. Um, so we have to be very, very careful that we don't take anything for granted and we won't. Um, you know, again, respect them, but but no fear. And uh, we'll go there and try and, you know, implement our game, game style onto them. And on the other side, Charlotte is a team that's finding its confidence going through, even in defeat. There have been some very strong performances. At what point do, is there a worry of uh, confidence becoming overconfidence? I don't think there will be with this group. Um, <laughs> number one, I won't let it, um, you know, because I think I've said before, I still think we're a six out of ten. There's still a lot of growth in us. And, um, you know, we're not reaching the standards that I believe we can reach. So. There won't be overconfidence, and the players know that as well. Um, you know, we, we talk, we review games, we um, we preview the next game as well, and we talk about what we can do better, what we must improve on. So, you know, there'll be certainly no complacency from us. And does that does that start in training? Where Thank goodness. The competitiveness of just getting into the squad. Yeah, I believe it does. I, I think nobody's, you know, in that team at the moment thinking I've nailed down my place. You know, with the with the people that are coming back and we've mentioned already we've just signed Lille you know you've got Bronico coming back you've got Scott Arfield who started you know uh, the, the game before he got injured um, so we've got a lot of players now who are pushing for places which is which just makes a really competitive environment wow, thank you cheers Okay. You can tell Dino's thought a lot about this this, uh, this week and this is first and foremost on his mind um, just, I guess, your assessment on him recently and maybe why he's been kind of dropped off. Yeah, I mean, Yuri, as we all know, had a storming start to the season, you know. Uh, uh, created an assist in the goal against New York City with a, a fine header and a good performance and then scored the goal at Vancouver. I probably think he's just dropped off a little bit, which is probably expected. I, I think young lads, when they move up, you know, from legacy to to the first team as it is here in the MLS, you know, it can be a little bit up and down at times in terms of form and my job is to recognise when I feel that that drop is going to come and maybe take them out and, and work them to make sure they're, they're, they're getting, you know, some continu continual progress in their, their performances. So I just thought it was the right time to take him out. Um, and, you know, he's, he's caught in between a little bit because he can play left, but he can also play as a 10 as well. And, you know, the way I've wanted to play at the moment is him to be a little bit wider and he's been drifting inside a little bit too much at times. And But that's, you know, part of his makeup. And, you know, uh, we've been working with him over the last two weeks of when to come inside and when not to. Yeah. You know, such a brilliant answer, such a brilliant technical answer and like giving us like real details on like instead of just saying, oh, he's a young player and I'm just lost a little faith in him. He tells us exactly what's going on in terms of he's going inside too much. We want him wide. He's going inside. So like that's like just such a refreshing, refreshing, great answer to get from the gaffer, from any gaffer and especially Dean Smith for sure. Uh, but play him at the 10. You know, at some point we're going to see uh, Yuri at the 10. Dino keeps hinting at it. That's the second straight pregame press conference where he has said, Yuri at the 10 is a possibility, so that to me indicates that someday it will happen. You still haven't gotten a win. Is there anything that you've learned from those matches that maybe you want to implement going into New England this weekend? Well, the big thing for me is the, the change of mentality. Um, and that, that's one bit, been one of the biggest surprises for me that I think everybody believes that it's so hard to get points on the road. I'm not necessarily in that, in that seat because. Uh, you know, I've travelled now to Vancouver, to Toronto and Nashville and I don't think any of them journeys have resulted in us not getting the results on the day. Um, I think some of the some of the decisions that we've made on the day are, 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 what are the reasons why we haven't got the win and sometimes it's been things that are beyond our control. Um, take out of that what you will.
<laughs> oh, those silly, silly referees and their horrible, horrible penalty decisions. Is that a position that kind of still concerns you? It doesn't concern me uh, because I've got players that can play there. Um, you know, I'd like to see a lot more chances come from that position. Uh, I think without the ball, we've been really good in that position. With the ball, I think we could do a little bit better. But then pl the players who we have there can certainly do that. And it's hard. Players want to get a little bit of rhythm, and I think because of the injuries we had earlier, it's been tougher for them to get a little bit of rhythm. Uh, but I'm starting to see that now. Does that mean Scotty Arfield's come back to start again? Of the goals you've conceded a lot of times preventable. Um, you can also have talked about how it's okay to take to get chances. You just got to have guys take them. How worried are you that it's maybe created a bit of a, a thin margin for error for your defense? Um, I think we we've defended well as a team. I don't think it's just a, the defense. So. Um, Again, against uh, you know Cincinnati last week, apart from the goal, I think very rarely did the opposition get through to see the whites of my goalkeeper's eyes, which is what I want them to, to not be doing. Um, he's, he's having to save shots from 25, 30 yards and on the angles, which I expect my goalkeeper to do. So, um, you know, defensively, we've been really good with them. Listen, we know and we've been working on, you know, how to convert them, how to convert the chances we're getting, but to make sure that we keep getting them chances, that's the biggest thing. Um, our job is to coach the players, as I said last week. All right, Dino, if you say that, if you say that, Dino, you got to buy wine for the whole team. You can't just buy line for the back, buy wine for the back line and the goalkeeper on the uh, clean sheets. You got to buy wine for the entire team, bro. Come on. What are you doing? Like if the whole team is contributing, if it's not just the defenders that are contributing to this great team defense, everybody gets wine, right? Nice revolutionary war reference too with the whites of their eyes. Uh, um, going to a forest in the road and things, because sometimes it can be the distance and just the travel itself. But when you were on, um, and you've said this before, but you, when you were on with Sirius XM uh, earlier in the week, you were very boastful of how strong the crowds are in Charlotte and what that means here. Hell is yeah. that been a significant difference too, is that the road games may not have been as difficult because the crowds were not a factor? Possibly. Um, I mean, one of the biggest differences I suppose for me coming to the MLS is the fact that you know you go away and I mean we scored at Vancouver and I didn't hear nothing it was just silence you know I, that's different for me um, you know a little bit different in Nashville where we had a, a good thousand fans there I and mean, you, could, you could hear them um, so yeah that is a difference um, but as long as we keep the opposition fans quiet I'm happy. Yeah, and that's what the, you know, yeah. the supporters maybe not being there in Vancouver, but in Nashville and stuff. But do you find it? I mean, psychologically for the players, that that is, you know, a boost. I, yeah, I mean, I, I say to the players before we go out there, I said, you know, there's no better feeling when it's just the 30 people or 40 people who have travelled, you know, along with the squad, the staff and the, the the content team. You feel so much better when you go and get a win, just you 40 against 20,000 who were all against you. So I, I, I find that a real good uh, incentive for everybody. God bless Dino for shouting out the content team. God bless you. I mean, he understands. Did, like, no, but like if, I've heard this from many people around, like that, that helped hire Dino, that helped bring Dino here, and they say like, uh, you know, it's just so great how he just like goes in and figures out everybody else's job, wants to know what people, random people sitting in an office uh, cubicle are doing and stuff like that, and it's like just that's reflected in the way he's like, yeah, we got, you know, he's not just think he's like when he mentions our team, he's like our team, the support staff, the content creators, like absolute chef's kiss from Dino right there and he just does it it does it as instinctively as he's breathing it's not like he's like forcing himself to shout people out he's just shouting him out because he wants to shout him out which is really cool uh, I can say I do know at least a dozen or so folks will be in New England and uh, with the crowd turnout that they usually get up there and with their team absolutely in free fall and already all but eliminated from CONCACAF Champions Cup with a gloomy trip to Mexico looming uh, at the next weekend or the next midweek excuse me um there aren't going to be that many New England fans uh, in Gillette Stadium, and uh, hopefully the, the we can burn that mother. Yeah, 
actually got a little bit of action last week. Were you happy with what you saw from him and, and his shot stopping? Yeah, no, really happy. And like I say, like the the caliber of the goalkeeper we have, I don't expect him to get beat from 25, 30 yards. Um, and he's not, he's not looked like it. Did he say the caliber? <laughs> Of the goalkeeper we have, did, he, did Dino just make a pun there on Kalina's name? Getting beat from that distance awesome. so far as well, which is really pleasing for us. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot he could do about the, the goal uh, last week. And, you know, yeah, I'm really pleased with what he's doing so far. Thank you, uh, Correct. And then you mentioned that maybe uh, Leal Abad is still not ready for those 90 minutes or to do <clears throat> start. What are... What... What do you see in uh, the differences between him coming in? I guess I got like Dion who came in and was ready to go. Um. The different types of players. Um, Leal's more of a fast twitch player. Uh, you know, he's. You, I think you saw from the 30 minutes that he played, he's a sprinter. Um, you know, he gets the ball and runs direct. You know, uh, I think Didi's more of a, a galloper. You know, the way he runs. Um, you know, so there is a little bit difference, and I think, unfortunately for for Liel as well, he's come off the back of an international break where he only played 20 minutes for the national team as well. Um, but I haven't not decided not to start him. I'm just not sure whether he's ready. But I'll have a I'll have a look, have a chat with him and a look tomorrow. Okay, everyone good in the room? Okay. Breaking news! Breaking news! Breaking news! Lee Abada and Jibril Diani are completely incomparable in types of players in terms of their fitness being available to play their position. Who would have thought? But uh, we do have a little. It did the, that uh, silly comparison did bring to mind a uh, uh, moment from training today that I saw with our good friend Matt Gesslin, who uh, was there shooting, and he shot this photo. I don't know how well we can see it, but we'll try. Uh, this is Liel walking into practice today, next to Patrick. And uh, I think I made it smaller there, but uh, you can see. <laughs> Love that uh, the difference in sizes between those two guys, and they're both zoom real quickly. very uh, capable of playing. First, and Steve Monday. Second, let me have Ooh, this is where it gets one. spicy, I think, with Sam. How are you? Okay. Yeah, uh, So, on the press, uh, Caleb Porter, manager for the New England Revolution, um, just said that we're going to get a win Saturday. I promise that. Uh, I wanted to know if you had any response. Well, he shouldn't make promises he, he might not be able to keep. <laughs> so, not a great statement to make if you if that's down to your team and not something that you can actually keep. Amazing. And then, um, keep going, keep going, going Dean. Just let it sit right. there. Oh man, I wish they would have just. I wish he would just said nothing and just let let it linger and let get, Dean just keep going until he uh, just really win it on Porter. But introducing Leal um, officially to the media. All right. On, well, that wasn't as today. super spicy as I um, hoped it would be, the, but uh, uh, pretty fun. I love, I love Dean. I love. I love Dean. Right um, a lot of questions about um, you know the transition and his reasons for leaving. Um, I just want to know if you know, you've had the opportunity to, to talk to him about that and if you could share any of how Charlotte FC as a club is, um, is supporting his, uh, uh, you know, his move to Charlotte. And we're very supportive and we're pleased to, to have Leo here. Um, he's been welcomed with open arms by all of our fan base, all of our staff, all of our supporters. Um, you know, and we're great to have. We're grateful to have him here. Um, you know, I don't think there's any more I need to say to him, to be honest. And other than that, we're pleased to have him. Liel is here. Finally, Get used to it. This question for last. Taylor Swift or Beyonce? You become a celebrity. What? Yeah, dear me. <laughs> I think I'd have to go back to Madonna. That was more my, my <laughs> day. Classic. Okay. All right, thanks, Sam. Uh, Steve, uh, take a bow, <laughs> Dean Smith, to quote uh, hey, coach, the material girl I'm herself. Good, thank you, yourself. I'm doing great, thank you. Uh, 
Obviously, the weather is much colder today here than it has been over the past couple of days. We had 80 degrees a few days ago, but now oh, a New England in reporter the in the house. with some, some winds out there making it nice and cold. Oh, no, this is not a New England uh, reporter. This is Steve. New England, uh, Saturday, it's going to be even colder there. Temperatures in the 40s with a 40% chance of rain and some breezy conditions out on the pitch. How does that help you to get the team prepared, obviously, uh, with the temperatures transitioning here? to get cooler as you get up, up, up to the northeast. Steve Monday, a lot I like this. going to Newcastle for me, so looking forward to it. And, um, you know, we, we've got some European players who are, who are used to these conditions as well, uh, none more than uh, Yere Urinen. Um, so we'll, we'll all be used to these conditions, and, uh, you know, if they want to warm up, run a little bit more. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Thank you. Okay, final one, uh, Queen's Pitch. The weather is going to be a factor on Saturday. Um, is that me, Will? Oh, sorry. Queen, I'm just seeing the queue from back here over here. Queen City Soccer Show. Luke Beetle, go ahead. Okay. Hey, uh, Gap, this is Luke. I uh, just wanted to, to check in with you. Uh, as far as the recent run of form, uh, you guys played arguably the roughest stretch of the year on paper, uh, and we could come out with a, a number of pull points here. Do you think that this is a squad that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top of the East. Uh, uh, can you see Charlotte FC finishing uh, uh, in, in the top and getting a home playoff game? I mean, I'm not going to look too far ahead at all because, you know, it's fairly new to me, but... You know, the two top teams we've just played over the last two weeks and we've fared reasonably well against them, played well against them. I think there's a belief in this group that we can grow and get better and I still think there's a lot more to come. Um, but we've got to find consistency in our game. If we do that, then there's no reason why we can't. Easy peasy. I completely agree, Dino. Uh, it's time to go win something. It's time to go host a playoff game. I love that confidence. And I also like not... Looking too far ahead, take it game by game. So that's decoding the presser. Wasn't quite the complete like suplex body slam of Caleb Porter that I was hoping for uh, when I first started hearing about this on social, but uh, not bad, not bad. So uh, I do love a little bit of spiciness from the gaffer, and uh, I do love you for watching this. Uh, it's for the crown, baby. We'll see you on Saturday. Make sure uh, you have made your plans to attend because... This shit's going to get wild. It's going to be a good old time. And uh, I think we're going to be having lots of goal chants, lots of good times, lots of brouhaha's, drink together, win together. We'll see you all there.